Famous for its tree-lined streets, gardens and European architecture, it lies in the east of Qingdao, with the Taiping Mountain on the one side and the Yellow Sea on the other. Right by the number two beach, in fact. For anyone who's into leafy suburbs, this part of Qingdao is a real treat. Each street is lined with a single type of tree or flower, which is how the locals recognize which street they're on. In fact, the proud locals often say that anyone who comes to Baraguan will never lose their way because the flowers and trees are the best possible guides. Baraguan is basically a conglomeration of several crisscrossing roads. The eight roads are all named after eight strategic passes on the Great Wall in and around Beijing. You'll definitely get a gentle, quiet suburban feel as you pass the hundred or so Western villas on display here. With its proximity to the ocean and its all year round sea breeze, it's easy to see why this area is chosen by so many affluent people as their home. There's a particularly high concentration of holiday houses here as well. So why not come in the summer and rent yourself a historic villa? You could say that it's a great area in all seasons, with its fragrant smells and shade from the trees, keeping everything dry and cool, whether it's raining or it's sunny. Next to the eight passes and slightly east of the beach, you'll find a giant outcrop of rock with a Russian-style villa built on top. Due to the type of stone used to build the villa, the locals have given it the nickname Hua Shelo, which means colorful rock building. It's a five-story structure of stone and marble with a large turret at the top to add to the Gothic feel. Originally the home of a Russian aristocrat, this top-class piece of real estate dating from 1932, combines an interesting mix of Greek, Roman and Gothic influences. There's also the added fact that the inside is filled with Chinese furniture within rooms that are distinctly European. Ooh. It's not too pleasant out there, but I've got a feeling I'll be able to have a, a better view of Qingdao from above. Well, the rain may dampen our clothes, but not our spirits. Let's see if we can find the secret passage that leads out directly from the house to the seashore. Or so I'm told. So like any place on earth or most places on earth, Qingdao unfortunately is not averse to the odd downpour and heavy wind like we've got today. Uh, that said, it does teach you when traveling to uh, always be prepared and in this case, reminds you of where Qingdao used to be as a tiny little fishing village and they'd have to put up with diverse weather like this going out to get their food just for sustenance. Something you will really appreciate from up here is how even on good days the waves come crashing down far more powerfully on the east coast than they ever do on the south. Which begs the question, would you have been man enough to go out on days like this? even if your livelihood depended on it like it did for the fishermen in the 19th century. But it's not all about hanging out by the beach when you're in Qingdao. There's so much fun to be had taking in the culture of this fascinating city. For example, you can make your way over to the restored Tianhe Temple. It's a 20 minute walk eastward from Baraguan and is dedicated to the heavenly queen Tianhe. Actually, the temple also moonlights as the Qingdao Folk Museum. You can take as active a role as you want here, but when you go through the doorway, just remember the Chinese saying, Nan Zhou Nu Yo meaning left foot first for a man and right foot first for a woman. 
So Tianhe Temple was built over 500 years ago, which means that it actually predates Qingdao City itself. And a lot of the cultural relics are still available for you to see here. I've managed to find myself a relatively dry spot as it's just started raining, but I don't really feel like I'm uh, absorbing any of the culture. So I'm going to see if I can make a break for it into the uh, main temple area. Well, can't always uh, plan for the best weather on holiday and uh, I've obviously planned very badly traveling today. However, I think it's quite apt that we've arrived at the Tianhe Temple in Qingdao, which is primarily dedicated to the goddess of the sea, Mazu, who would look after the sailors out on the coast. And I think on a day like today, they could probably use all the help they can get. There are other gods here in the temple that used to worship, but this is the main one. Mazu is worshipped widely in the southeast coastal areas of China and across Southeast Asia, where seafaring traditions are strong. The real-life Mazu, so the story goes, was a lady named Lin Monyang, who was born in the year 960 on Meizhou Island off the coast of Fujian province. Mazu is usually depicted together with two guardian generals, known as the Thousand Miles Eye and With the Wind Ear. They're said to have been two demons who Mazu subdued and turned into loyal guardians and friends. According to popular legend, Mazu was taught the mysteries of the Tao by a priest and subsequently began a lifetime of selfless charity, guiding ships into harbor and saving sailors from drowning. Mazu aside, this particular temple is multi-denominational as other gods are worshiped here. Among them, the dragon king, and the god of wealth. Well, safe in the knowledge that Mazu is looking over us, we decide to head on down to the harbour for some sailing lessons. Using the motor first to get out. My first sailing lesson. Woohoo! Uh, uh, We're using the motor first to get out. The trick is just to try and keep your balance. At the moment, I'm managing well, so step one of sailing done. Don't fall into the water. Woo. Engines off, once the mast is up, you're ready to go. Not exactly a professional yet, but uh, just uh, being given my first lesson. It's very exciting. Hopefully at some point they might even let me, uh, what, I don't even know how to say that, uh, use the rudder, be the captain for a second. Um, but at the moment, just enjoying it with, uh, with my teacher here. Don't worry if you don't know how to sail, never been on a boat or never even seen the sea. The teachers are all extremely professional and more importantly in my case, extremely patient. In fact, there are people ready to help, 
whatever level of sailor you see yourself as. So we've taken a quick breather as uh, the wind's pretty much died out, but I've been really impressed by the sheer enthusiasm of the crew uh, trying to teach me pretty rookie on my first day, first lesson ever. However, really have been impressed and surprised by the sheer number of, uh, of Chinese people out on the seas learning to sail. So who knows, maybe the next Olympic champion could come from Qingdao itself. Qingdao was chosen as the site for the sailing competitions of the 2008 Beijing Olympics. Problem was, the city had no yacht clubs or sailing centres. So a 45-acre venue had to be created from scratch at a cost of $470 million on the site of a former shipyard. Despite sailing being relatively new to China, its popularity is burgeoning at an exponential rate. A fact clearly illustrated by the vast numbers of Chinese spectators that turned out for the Olympic events. This has helped the sport develop at grassroots level, as has the conversion of the Olympic facilities into a marina and sailing school for future Olympic sailors. Right, enough time on the water for one day. Let's go and get a bird's eye view of the city. The Qingdao TV tower is a 232 meter tall transmission tower situated on the top of the Taiping Hill in Julin Park. Built in 1994, the glass observation deck is perfect for some quiet contemplation. If you're feeling a little peckish, head to the revolving restaurant so you can fill up those grumbly stomachs whilst Qingdao revolves around you. And finally, make your way up to the wind-lashed outdoor sightseeing platform on top. Just in case you get quizzed about this place, you should know that it's the third highest steel tower in the world after the Eiffel Tower in France and the Tokyo Tower in Japan. Perfect place to take a break for now and just enjoy the view. Well, they say a picture's worth a thousand words and what a sight to behold. It's a 360 degree view of Qingdao in all of its splendor. And we're lucky enough that today is a gloriously sunny day, which has gone a little bit far enough to make me feel okay about the fact that unfortunately, that's all the time we've got left for today. Really hope you've enjoyed this part of the trip around Qingdao. You've learned a bit of culture and had a bit of fun. I'm Mark Edwards, and I'll catch you very soon on another episode of Travelogs.